supported in part by the Oregon Club of Portland, dedicated to supporting Oregon athletics. Taylor Electric Supply Incorporated, Harold Taylor. Montador Vineyards, Oregon's premier wine estate. Mashofsky Enterprises, Art and Ed Mashofsky. Immer and Oswald Volvo and Cardale Mountain Realty, your Central Oregon real estate specialist. Oregon won the toss of the coin. I'd like to defer its decision until the second half, and so UCLA will get the football to start the game. You see the uh, new spirit flag that they unveiled for this contest. Looks kind of nice, and they had an opportunity to run around the field a couple of times uh, with that during the course of the game. Liam Hayes to kick off, but uh, UCLA does a nice job in the opening kickoff and gets good field position. They sure did. They. Uh took it out past midfield and uh, we just did a poor job but we didn't kick it well enough and then we didn't cover it well enough uh, thought we'd kind of overcome that problem but obviously we have to go back to the drawing board and do some more work Maddox uh, pulls the ball down and scrambles before being tackled by Farwell but your defense did a good job here on the first defensive series keeping UCLA from scoring well UCLA tried to run the next two times and come up empty-handed Nice job by Castle Air, Farwell, uh, Singleton, although he got rolled over, he forced the play back inside. They come back with a sweep again, and nice job again by Marcus Woods and Batista. Take a look at that one down low. You'll see Marcus uh, spin back into the hole here. Right here, comes spinning off, gets there first to meet Brian Brown and gets help from Batista and Andy Connor. So, no gain, fourth down and two, UCLA forced to punt. The Ducks get it back. What was it about screen passes that you thought uh, would be so successful against the Bruins? Well, they, we thought that they might uh, be playing fairly tight on our receivers, and as beat up as we were, we tried to get the, the ball quickly to them and see if we get running room. Nice job by Anthony Jones here, almost breaks this, but uh, UCLA, as, as we learned throughout the contest, has great speed in the secondary. And he's caught after a 17-yard gain. This is a second down and seven play here. Now Luke Calamini gets 10 for first down. We'll look at it again. Good hole at the line of scrimmage. Nice job. Uh, Andy Sunia opens the hole. Burwell comes through, gets a nice block. Sean is improving as a blocker. And Turner comes up and uh, meets Calamini and stops him after 10 yards. So on a third down and four, the Ducks at the UCLA 44-yard line. Musgrave to throw, can't find a receiver who actually uh, runs into one of the officials, and Musgrave is sacked. So the Ducks forced to punt, and uh, Tommy Thompson did a good job here just uh, scooping the ball up. Did a little bit of a low snap, uh, been working on that. Uh, did a good job, punted it up 48 yards, and nice job on the coverage by Eric Castle. Uh, he's, a, he's a savior in the kicking game. Certainly is, so UCLA gets it back, no score. Their second possession, now they go to that shotgun look that they had most of the afternoon. Maddox. Scrambles out again, finds an open receiver over the middle, and uh, La Chapelle really hurt us. Uh, I think they just need to get him into the game more, and that's why they decided to go to this uh, three receivers and take the tight end. They got two great tight ends as well, but here he goes again, scrambling out of the pocket. Our pass rush uh, wasn't good enough and we didn't rush well in lanes and didn't contain him all of the time. I have a three-man rush here, uh, nobody around him, and he hits Miller. Miller is one of the best receivers we've seen. He is a, he's a great player. A couple of the players after the game mentioned that, the fact they had played against him in high school. He was good then, and he's good now. Steps up, uh, finds Moore, who uh, caught some big ones against us and also had a couple of big drops that we were fortunate that he didn't hang on to. So later in the drive on fourth and one, their big fullback, Smith, at 245 pounds, gets the first down. And then on second down and eight from the 13, it's Maddox finds Miller for the touchdown. We, uh, the crowd was loud there, and we were trying to check. Uh, we had some breakdown in the secondary because we didn't communicate what we were doing between our three defensive backs on that side. Well, the Ducks got it back but could not move it. So UCLA, once again, with possession of the football, 120 to play in the first quarter. Second down and six play here. Finally do get pressure, but uh, La Chapelle gets open and away he goes and Castle makes a touchdown saving tackle uh, down deep in our territory. This actually turned out to be a very, very big drive as UCLA looking for another score late in the first quarter. 
Maddox, there's the Miller again, a little hook, and he's got another first down. Next play we see is second down and goal, the final play of the first period. Option play, tips Daryl Smith inside a little bit, Castle saves again the touchdown on about the two and a half yard line. We get into the second quarter and right off the get-go, Coach, a bizarre play on a field goal attempt by UCLA uh, on your film. You had a, a better view as we take a look at it here on our tape, but you had a good view on the tape exactly what happened here. Well, it, uh, the center is actually trying to snap the ball and he never gets it off the turf. It catches on the turf and it kind of dribbles back and then the right guard's, or the left guard's right foot hits it as it's dribbling back. It has no chance of getting there. He, the center just didn't get it up and he tried to drag it along the turf and it pulled it right out of his hands and it just dribbled back. A big break for us. That old Omni turf. Yeah, the old screen pass here to uh, Burwell and uh, that's the play Jeff Thomason broke his ankle on. The, uh, the pile came down on the back of his ankle and uh, he had surgery this morning. He'll have, he had two, two screws put in his ankle and he'll be out uh, six to eight weeks before the screws were taken out. That's a shame. He was having a great, great year too. UCLA comes right back. Uh, nice out pass, well covered by Smith, but a completion nonetheless. Shotgun again, they try the little draw play. Marcus stuffs it, gets help from Farwell. Uh, we really did a good job on their running game and uh, did a very poor job, I think, uh, overall on their passing game. But the fact that we were able to stop their run eventually helped us in the second half because we were able to, to, to do much better in the passing game. Joe Farwell, another outstanding game, again, in double digits and tackles. Great game, six tackles, uh, one sack, three for loss. Little low snap there. Uh, and uh, a missed field goal. So we dodged the bullet again. Very, very fortunate. 44-yarder that was wide to the right. Third and three as the Ducks get it back. Bill would like to have that one back as it is intercepted by Lions and UCLA again in great scoring position. Looked like we kind of had a death wish, didn't it, in that quarter. Uh, just uh, And the second uh, quarter has been unbelievably good to you this yeah. year. Great job by the defense holding them to a field goal in that situation. So UCLA leading 10 to nothing, but at this point it could have been worse. And now the Ducks finally mount an offensive drive and get on the board. Counter play, uh, nice blocking, and Kelamini takes it up in there for about a seven yard gain. Second down and short. Sean Burwell, who had another good game. Bounces it outside, picks up a first down. First and 10 at the 35. Draw play again. Kelamini bounces it outside, gets tackled by the face mask. Gained only about one yard, but the 15-yard penalty gives us a first down. The ball in UCLA territory now on a third down and two play at the Bruin 41. Big conversion here. You were one for 12 last week, and this week much better. We uh, improved definitely in third down conversions. Nice pass to Kelamini in the flat. You can see Jones coming across in motion. A little fake inside. Musgrave does a good job uh, getting out on the perimeter. Throws a nice pass. Kelamini has to stretch for it, but he makes a nice catch for the first down. Big third down conversion because you were probably uh, out of field goal range at the time. Second down and eight, Musgrave, a little under throw, but Reitzik comes back, makes the catch, and the ball is now at the two-yard line. Nice job. Uh, get some good pass protection here off the play fake. Musgrave has enough time to step up, throw it, a little under thrown. Joe adjusts to the ball as he does so well and makes a catch. Reitzik with three catches on the day for 63 yards. I thought Bill had about three different options here on this play, and they chose to go to Calamani. <laughs> He, uh, he had two people open, uh, Calamini open early, and uh, really didn't make a very good decision on that. He, he kind of was indecisive, which he normally is not. And a little quick trap to uh, Calamini takes it in for the touchdown. So you get on the board, and with McCallum's extra point, it's 10-7. Excellent block by Colin Hall on that play, who played uh, the entire game at center. So it is 10-7, late second quarter. Fans are now having a good time. Third largest crowd in the history of Watson Stadium. It was a great crowd. Again, a nice completion on the sideline. Mingo Hosey knocks him out of bounds. Shotgun again. Blitz this time, and we get to him. Farwell and Derry both get there about the same time. We'll look at it on the low replay. 
You see Farwell coming through, avoids uh, block there, and he and Derry on the blitz get there about the same time. Second down and 15, but Maddox finds uh, one of his tight ends and gets the first down, a gain of 18, and the ball now at the duck 40. It's kind of a hard choice, isn't it? I mean, will you take those, will that kind of a guy out of the game and put in La Chapelle? I mean, they do have some athletic ability. They certainly do. Excellent job there, uh, forcing the sweep. Rory Derry, Batista. On third and 11. Bruins did not have a good day converting third downs, but the ones they did convert were big, big plays. Pretty big. Here's a big one right here. Maddox again running with the football. 17-yard gain and a first down. Now time running out. First half. 57 seconds remaining. Second down and eight. Maddox underneath to Miller, and he gets another first down. Tackle by Smith. Second down and eight. Good play here by, I think it was Singleton that uh, broke it up right at the last minute. Got his hand on the ball, knocked it down. And then third down and eight. We take the play fake here. Uh, don't contain the quarterback, and he finds more in the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. Let's go into the third quarter highlights. So the, the Ducks get the football to start the third period of play, but uh, unable to... Uh, Get it into the end zone, but do come up with some points, which I thought was important, that first drive of the third period. It was. We talked about it at halftime. We needed to move the ball, move the chains, and uh, nice play there by Joe Reitzig, and he hustles to the boundary, but uh, I'll tell you, that safety's a pretty good football player. Turner. <laughs> Looks like a linebacker, you know? He reminds me of Ronnie Lott in a lot of respects yeah. with his speed and ability to cover and hit. Great job by Reitzig here coming back to the ball. Musgrave's in a little bit of trouble. He comes back to the ball, and takes it across the field, and here goes Turner. He, he looks like, uh, like I said, a linebacker, and he's got great speed. He's an outstanding player. But it's a gain of 27 and a first down as the Ducks have the ball at midfield. This is a second down and eight play. I'd say that's pass interference. I'd say he did not give Joe Reitzik an opportunity to catch the ball. I'm not sure Joe still has his shoulder pads on <laughs> after that. <laughs> but it's, a, it's an eight-yard penalty. We talked about uh, why last week. Screen pass to Calamini, straight arm, gets out of bounds for first down. Don't see that straight arm too often nowadays. Well, the guys do it pretty well, I think. First and 10, Burwell. Nice, nice play off left tackle. Uh, Burwell picks up about eight. Ran the ball a little more effectively in the second half than in the first half. Well, a little better. We just didn't break any runs. I think nine yards or 10 yards was our longest run. We had several about that distance. Musgrave with a sneak. We can't. Go much further, and the field goal uh, by McCallum puts us down by 7, 17 to 10. 63 yards in 12 plays. UCLA gets it back, and after a 35-yard gain to their tight end, Austin, they fumble on second or first down and uh, a loss of two. Farwell in there. He mishandled uh, the handoff, and Farwell was in there to make the tackle for a loss. Now Maddox tries to go over the middle, and we've got a kind of a robber defense where Castle comes up short. Uh, and looks for crossing patterns, and he made a real nice interception on that, going high in the air. I think we'll get a little better angle of him going up in the air. From ground level here, you can get a real good perspective of how high he has to go up to make that play. And we did. That was a big play because uh, UCLA was driving to answer our field goal, and they had crossed midfield, and the defense came up with a big play. So Castle with the INT, he was the Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Week last week in the victory over Stanford. Draw play to Burwell again, picks up a, a nice gain. Just couldn't break the long run, uh, you know, even a 15 or 20 yarder. I guess their safeties uh, converge so fast that it's tough to get past them. They did. Vince Ferry there on a little uh, tight end delay, coming back into the middle, picks up the first down. And then on a third and seven play, as the drive stalls a little bit at uh, midfield, Musgrave to a Burwell, a gain of five, but it's two yards shy of the first down. Not enough, uh, and we have to relinquish the ball. Bruins get it back. This is another third and six play. And they complete it for the first down. Good job by Joe Farwell getting back there. Uh, Mingo missed the tackle, and Farwell was there to make it. 
First and ten. Maddox. Marcus Woods spins out and gets the sack. Good pressure uh, from the perimeter here. We force Maddox to step up in the pocket. Get a good, good pressure uh, up the field, and then Marcus is there to make the sack. Third and 12. And again, the defense comes up with a big play as Maddox tries to get the ball downfield. But blanket coverage by Daryl Smith, his fifth interception of the year. You see he had the ball uh, when he hit the ground when he rolled over, but good pressure. I think Peter Brantley gets some credit for this because he spins the quarterback just a little bit, and Daryl Smith comes up with the ball, hits the ground, and then after he rolls over, Miller stripped it out. Do you guys give credit for defensive stats for hurries and things like that? No, we really don't. Probably should, but uh, so that was definitely a hurry by Brantley. First and ten from the 40. Musgrave. Spinning out, writes it. Hello. <laughs> Mr. Darby. Darby uh, laid some licks out there. Uh, UCLA was ready to play. That was a great job by Musgrave and Reitzig. A uh, little experience on that. And there's a, a five-yard face mask penalty to tack on to Burwell's run. So we're near the end of the third period. The Ducks driving, trying to tie the football game up with a touchdown. Third down and five. And Musgrave scrambles out for the first down. Final play of the third quarter. We've got a lot coming up in the fourth period, so don't go away. Into the fourth quarter we go. UCLA has the lead. The Ducks will have the football to try to tie this football game up with uh, a touchdown. Well, we fooled uh, their outside linebacker, but we didn't fool their corner and safety, but we did get a five-yard gain. So it is good enough for five yards, second down and five from the Bruin 22. Good uh, hard running inside by Juan Shedrick. Picks up gain of six and a first down. Musgrave now goes back to throw. Hits Anthony Jones out in the flat. And we pick up four on that play. So on a third down and five from the UCLA 11. Okay, we'll call it third and six. <laughs> Musgrave to throw, but on a safety blitz, Darby comes in and knocks down Musgrave. Didn't, uh, should have been audible in that situation, did not, and we get nailed. But uh, McCallum, as he has done many, many times for us, converts uh, with a 38-yard field goal. Now, overlooked in uh, the come from behind victory is his two big field goals in the second half that uh, got you back in it. Definitely were big. And uh, athletic ability again showing there. Maddox scrambles away from pressure, finds Brian Brown, and they pick up a good game. And on third and seven. Just under 10 minutes to play. Bingo. This looked like it was going to be a heartbreaker. Miller's about as good as anybody we've seen this year. He's got great speed, hands, runs tremendous routes. Uh, juggled the ball for an instant. Daryl Smith really had pretty good coverage on him. And then when Miller broke it, uh, we were a little out of position with the safeties. Well, here we go, the final nine minutes. Third down play here, and boy, is this a big one. Tattersall gets a good block, and Burwell shakes a tackle, and 49 yards later, we're deep in UCLA territory. You can see Tattersall 64 coming out. He'll come into the left of your screen here with the block right there, and Burwell takes it up inside and makes a good move there, switching the ball, shedding the tackle, and remember he's playing on that uh, Astro turf toe that he has that's bothering him and he gets caught there. I don't think you're going to see him caught too many times in his career. But it was a big gain, uh, both from a physical standpoint and an emotional standpoint as well. Shedrick on a slip screen. And Shedrick powers forward for a, for a nice gain. And then maybe the play of the game, at least up to this point, on fourth and two. We're not going to get a good look at it, Coach. Uh, but pass interference was called on UCLA in the end zone. Uh, good pressure there. We're trying to hit Jones. You can see the flags out early. Uh, uh, I, the, the explanation I saw, I can't see the thing on our film either, but uh, apparently he grabbed Anthony Jones's jersey down there, and we get first down and immediately score with Shedrick on the same trap play that Kelamini scored with early in the game. Nice job by uh, 
Andy Sunia on the trap block there playing with a hyperextended elbow. You can see that tape all over his, his elbow. And then you go for two. Go for two. It's one of those plays uh, I saw some fans after me. Great call, coach. Yeah, if it got tackled, it would have been boo. Uh, <laughs> We decided to run the draw play. We'd been running sprint outs and things in play action, and uh, Sunia comes around the corner. Kalamini takes a handoff from Musgrave and runs in basically untouched. Going against tendencies, and uh, you have to do that later in the year, don't you? Yes, you do. So, 6-10 to play, and now it's the defense that has to get the football back. Try to run the clock a little bit here on us. Uh, UCLA really was never able to establish a ground game, and that's what in the end saved us. Excellent job there, Pike. Who else? Marcus Woods. So on third and six, James Batista makes a big play right here. Makes a tackle on Sean Wills, who has tremendous speed, short of the first down, and UCLA has to punt the ball away. Well, your special teams, uh, the punt return has been an integral part the last two weeks, and now here, it plays a big role, a 24-yard return by Brian Brown. Good job, Terrell Edwards, Doug Douglas get two great blocks on that return, 24 yards, to set us up in great field position to make an effort at the winning touchdown. You can see Terrell Edwards block right there, and another one by Doug Douglas right there on number 40. And Brown uh, has had uh, three very productive weeks returning the football. Indeed he has. Second down and 10. This is an unbelievable play by Sean Burwell. Not too bad by Musgrave either, but uh, we'll get another look at this. You watch Burwell step up after the fake and hit the blitzing linebacker, Ali. Ali spins him off. He stops the linebacker's charge, keeps his balance, gets the screen pass. Suni is out in front, and Burwell takes it down the sideline before being caught. Great play by... Sean Burwell, who finished with 229 yards of all-purpose yardage yesterday. Then on third down and nine. We've called time out here. We're going to run the little fake quick screen to Burwell and hit Vince Ferry out in the uh, corner for the touchdown. And that, as you might expect, is our play of the day. Tell us how it worked and why you put this into practice this week. Well, we've been running the, the, what we call the wide screen. Sometimes we do it to the wide receivers out here. We did it earlier in the game with uh, Burwell coming out to this side in motion and then coming back. Uh, he obviously is a fairly talented player. We need to get the ball in his hands. And we had run this play earlier uh, in the game as well, and we ran it uh, last week very successfully, too, in a critical situation. We felt bringing Burwell out of the backfield in motion and bringing him back. Musgrave gives a little pump fake to Burwell, and on the play on the screen, the tight end, who in this case was Vince Ferry, it goes out to block the corner. If we're going to throw the screen, he blocks the corner. He kind of fakes like he's going to block the corner and slides by him. The safety freezes here in, in the middle because Musgrave gives a little pump fake to Burwell, and then Musgrave throws probably his best pass <laughs> of the day, uh, just a dart right into Vince Ferry, and, and Vince makes his first touchdown one a memorable one. Certainly one that all Oregon fans will remember. Watch the little pump fake to Burwell right there. The corner bites on Burwell, and Ferry makes the catch in the corner for the touch. Like you said, it also froze the safety just momentarily, and that was the difference. So now with the extra point, a key extra point, because you're up by four instead of three. Right. Now they have to score a touchdown to beat us. Uh, they can't tie us with a field goal. Wow. It's been a tremendous last seven minutes, but UCLA still has a chance to win the football game. Matt Labonte sets an all-time school record for sacks in a career, 19 and a half. Great job by Labonte. He's getting double teamed on this play. Andy Connor forces Maddox to step up in the pocket, and Labonte comes off two blockers and makes the sack. Strong hands to pull down Maddox, second and 14. Almost intercepted by the survivor, as you say. Daryl Singleton, a nice play. I thought on the sideline he was going to have that, and the ball just sunk on him a little bit like a, like a knuckleball. And going deep here, Singleton again in coverage, caught but clearly out of bounds. Fourth and 14. They're going to go deep here, uh, try to go uh, deep on Mingo Hosey, number two at the bottom, right-hand corner of your screen. He looks left, goes right. 
And he almost intercepts this ball. He's in great position, running stride for stride. Mingo's got tremendous speed. And uh, obviously a pretty important play. And the crowd erupted. A festive atmosphere because all you had to do was hold on to the ball. UCLA did have two timeouts, but not only do you hold on to the ball, you get a first we down. We got a ball. first down uh, and then uh, run out the clock. Good job here by Burwell. Again, picking up some yardage, getting it down there, running time off the clock for the first down. And that's the last play we will see as the crowd comes out onto the field. And uh, almost a dangerous situation. It's, you well, you it, had to run for your life. It wasn't almost. It really was, Todd. Uh, it, it got a little out of control. And, uh, you know, I, I think we've got to do a little better job. Uh, some players could be injured, some opposing uh, coaches, whatever. We just need to do a better job of keeping people off the field until uh, things are cleared out. And there goes uh, one goal post almost. They, this is the one they, that actually stayed well, up. They bent that one, and then they went down to the other end and got the other one, I guess. How much do those things cost? Oh, I don't know, four or $5,000. Yeah. We'll pick up the tab, I guess, this week. Take a look at the final statistics. Rushing. Well, the Ducks, again, hold an opponent under 100 yards. And the Ducks with 131. Sean Burwell just missed yet another 100-yard day. He had tw uh, 26 carries for 97 yards. The Ducks with 131. Passing, Musgrave, 14 of 23, 224 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Maddox, 21 of 34, 332 yards, three TDs, but two interceptions. Let's flip the page. You take a look at the penalties. The Ducks leading the conference in least amount of penalties and again do a very good job in that area. The two interceptions in the third period obviously very important. Punting, Tommy Maddox, four for an average of 37 yards. And third down conversions. Remember the Ducks were one of 12 last week. This week almost 50 percent. UCLA officially two for ten. Big victory over UCLA, but now the Ducks have got to come back and take on uh, the California Golden Bears. One of the surprise teams in the conference this year. Bruce Snyder has done a very nice job down there. They are 5-3-1 and one, and 3-2-1 and one in conference play. Let's look at some highlights from last night's tie, 31-31 against Southern California. They've gone to the run. Russell White has been an impact player. Well, not only that, he's uh, unbelievable on kickoff returns, so that's going to be obviously a major emphasis for us this week, though, certainly because of what UCLA did to us. Russell White is a Tremendous athlete, great speed. Uh, we also have Anthony Wallace. And they've got the best one-two combination at tailback. Well, you know, you can't say too much uh, there either because they have a couple pretty good ones up in Seattle as well. It's been an outstanding season. We've got two regular season games to go. You'll be able to see the Cal-Oregon game on tape delayed around the area. Until next week, we'll see you. Oregon Football 90, sponsored in part by the Oregon Club of Portland, dedicated to supporting Oregon.